Hello, I am Jeff Seidman, and welcome to the Jeff Seidman Fitness Podcast. Today, I got a real special treat for you, and that is Brad Wadlow. Brad is one of the original winners of the 1997 Body of Work 12-Week Transformation Challenge, and here are his winning 12-Week Challenge pictures. Here's his before fit picture, obviously. He looks like your typical overweight, metabolically unhealthy guy. And here are his 12 week after pictures. An amazing change in just 12 short weeks. Now, Brad and I were both winners of the 1997 challenge. And once again, here is the January 1997 issue of Muscle Media Magazine that promoted the 12 week challenge with the winner getting that badass red Lamborghini right there and a $50,000 cash prize. I hope you're ready for another great interview with another great champion. Let's welcome Brad Wadlow to the show. How you doing, Brad? Hey, I'm doing good, Jeff. Uh, doing really good. Thanks for having me on. Awesome, awesome. So, Brad, let's just jump right into the nitty gritty. Do you remember the moment you saw the January issue of Muscle Media Magazine and did you decide to do the contest right then and there? And what was going on in your life back then? Well, Jeff, I was, uh, I was, I was an avid reader of the magazine, but I uh, probably hadn't taken real action about all the things I've read about. And I was in the grocery store, and I, the magazine caught my attention. I seen it and uh, stood right there, read the whole article, bought the magazine, didn't even sleep that night. Totally decided right then and there that I was going to do it. And uh, just went home, started making out a plan. Awesome, man. I did, so, I did something very similar. When I first saw that magazine, I said, I'm going to enter that contest. And probably like you, I didn't even think I'm going to uh, compete. I decided I was going to win it. I don't yeah, know if you felt that, that way when you first saw yeah, it. Exactly. I'm like, that, that's mine. I'm going to win that Lamborghini. Yeah. Awesome. Great mentality. <laughs> So, so uh, back in 1997, we didn't have access to the internet, websites, YouTube, or social media like we have today. So how were you able to get the information you needed to create such an incredible transformation? I got every, you're, you're right. There was, there was no internet. I didn't, we didn't even know what email was back then, right? And um, right. yeah, I got every, absolutely 100% of it from uh, Muscle Media and Bill Phillips. Uh, yeah, if it, wasn't, if it wasn't for Bill, like, it just taught, taught you everything you needed to know. Yeah, and, and uh, as I've said many times in the past, uh, you know, Bill uh, changed the whole fitness industry. You know, he was the first magazine to com come along and tell the truth. You know, like Joe Weider's magazines would say, yeah. you know, take, take these uh, life essence amino acids and you could build the body of uh, Lee Haney. But Bill came along and said, no, that's all steroids. But here are some supplements that can help you build a great body. And here's the proper workouts to do that. If you're not a steroid taking bodybuilder, you know, like you say, he, he, he gave g great information. He did. It was a, it was a goldmine of information. And I remember getting the magazine and just couldn't, I, I just absorbed every word of it and uh, couldn't wait to get the next month, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Every, yeah. every, everything you needed to know was right there. And you know, there was no, uh, there was no BS in, in that in his magazine either it was all straightforward stuff that's why when i seen uh i mean i knew who bill was and everything and was familiar with the magazine and like if you'd see something like that in one of the other ones other magazines or um or from sorry you'd see something like that today you would think it was you know you'd think well this is a scam or something but it was bill so you knew it was legit yeah, like if you were to see that in uh, one of the Weeder magazines, Flex, or, uh, you know, any, any other of the magazines, you know everybody would be taking steroids. Yeah. Bill's, Bill's yeah. contest he knew was legit. Yeah, so speaking of that, getting the information from uh, Muscle Media, uh, let's tackle your nutrition. What was your nutritional plan you followed to drop all that body fat and get completely shredded? Well, and once again, I got it all from, I got learned it all from Bill. Um uh, I ate six small meals a day. I would have, I, I remember exactly what I ate really because I ate the same, I ate the same thing every day. Um, and the, and I would eat every three, approximately every three hours in the morning, I'd have egg whites and oatmeal and with some blueberries in the oatmeal. 
And then at nine o'clock, 12 o'clock and three o'clock. Well, I'm going to stop you for a second. How many egg whites were you putting in your oatmeal and how much oatmeal? Because I know a lot of the listeners are mm-hmm. going to want uh, details of what you did because they're going to want to achieve what you achieved. So uh, like how much oatmeal was it? How many egg whites? All that stuff. I had the, like a, a cup and a half of oatmeal and six egg whites pretty much and with oh, one yolk. Was- and I would, scra- I would scramble that up and a handful of blueberries. And, awesome. uh, so that- and for, for that was your first night, meal. Yeah. yeah, that was the first meal of the day. And then at mm-hmm. nine o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock at noon and three o'clock in the afternoon was the same meal. I bought um, these Tupperware like containers that had three trays in them. You know, we were meal prepping, Jeff, before that was a thing. Remember? Right. But, right. Uh, I would have like four to six ounces of chicken breast, um, pretty much just like a handful of rice and couple handfuls of mixed vegetables some kind of some kind of steamed vegetable and i would probably i think i would drizzle a little bit of olive oil on the chicken um and then that was nine twelve and three and at six i had uh one of the protein shakes like that bill had like the uh, myoplex shake and then at night depending on how i was feeling i usually it would just be another egg white omelet like six egg whites and uh and usually that was it. If anything else, maybe some mixed vegetables. So did you ever figure out your total calorie and macronutrient profile of what you were eating back then? Or you just kind of, uh, uh, you measured it by eye and, or just you felt you did it by feel or how, how what, what kind was it? What was know, it? I kind of had it down and I would, I, I didn't have it down right to the exact calorie, but mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it was around 2000 around there. And, uh, and I would judge it, I'd kind of judge it, like, look in the mirror and see how I was responding to it. And, um, yeah, kind of go from there. And that's why I, at night, sometimes I would cut the carbs out at night and just have an egg white on one. Right. But and that still like, applies. If I was a little flat, you know, I would, I would add, add some carbs at night. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, that still applies today. You want to keep your carbs low at night. So, uh, uh, yeah. that, that was a great protocol. I followed, followed something very similar, but of course I was trying to gain. So uh, I was eating uh, probably about 3,500 calories a day, but very similar food. So uh-huh. uh, anyway, spe- uh, continuing on that uh, path, let's tackle your workout and cardio routine. Explain to me the training program you followed to build all of that muscle. Okay, so... I listened to an interview with uh, Phillips and Mike Mincer, and I don't know if you remember that or not. Uh, It was a really good interview, and I was listening to uh, Mike talk, and I thought, man, this makes a lot of sense, you know. And it's kind of, it's very similar to the Body for Life program that Bill outlined without the 12, 10, 8, 6 reps in front of it, pretty much just like the sets to failure. So I worked out Monday and Thursdays. And I did it in a two-week split. I worked um, chest and back on Monday, legs on Thursday. But I worked chest and back in a way that it hit the entire upper body. And then the right, compound body, exercises, compound yeah. exercises. Yeah, and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll get to it. Um, and then the next week, I would do shoulders and arms and legs again on Thursday. But I do shoulders and arms in a way that it worked the upper body as well. Um, so for the first week in the split, I did uh, dumbbell flies, superset with close grip, incline press. Close grip with hands closer than shoulder width and elbows wide coming down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do one one set, six to six to, I'd shoot for the six to 10 rep range, but I would go to, I'd go to failure until I couldn't do it anymore. And um, so flies, incline press to failure. And then for back, I would do the, uh, we had a Nautilus pullover machine, if you've ever remember those. I think you mm-hmm. had some Nautilus, mm-hmm. didn't you, Jeff, in your first gym? Mm-hmm. I did. Uh, so I did the, uh, the I did the Nautilus pullover, superset with reverse grip, palms up, pull down. And followed that off with a set of dumbbell shrugs. And that was, that was Monday. That was uh, chest and back, but also worked, you know, pretty much your whole body, your whole upper body. And then Thursday... I would do was leg day and this is you're gonna like this this was really simple and quick it wouldn't take maybe 15 minutes um at the most 
So I did leg, I would always start with leg extensions and I would do four seconds up, four second hold at the top and four seconds down for the negative part. And I would do that. I would try to shoot from four to six rep range to failure. And then I would immediately, I'd already have the leg press set up and I immediately go to the leg press and uh, leg press to failure around 20 reps. I mean, I would, it may be, it may have been 30, it may be 15, but I would shoot for that, you know, I'd adjust the weight where I would approximately get around 20, I thought. And uh, a set of standing cap rates, and that was it. All, all that mattered was it was still failure. So it didn't matter if it was 15 or 30. It was to failure, yeah. complete failure. Right. Yeah. Complete. Not until it was uncomfortable enough to where you didn't want to do it, but until you couldn't do it anymore. When there's right, no right. Right. So to me, that's a. I split the, the two leg workouts up. One week I would do the leg press, leg extension superset with leg press. And then the next week I would do leg ex the same type of leg extension but superset with, with squats, of course, in a power rack, because you're going to, you're squatting to failure. Yeah. So one of the things that, uh, is, is really obvious from what you did only training two days a week and achieving that type of muscle mass is training to failure is the most important thing. You see guys training six days a week. I train six days a week, as a matter of fact, but I train to failure. And the, all the, you see most people in the gym, they don't build much muscle because they'll do 12 reps and they'll stop, even though they have three or yeah. four more reps left in the tank. You have to train to failure to get your body yeah. to create the adaptations to the stress. So it builds more muscle, it gets stronger. And that's the biggest mistake I see in the gym. Very yeah, few people absolutely. train to if failure. You, if you, yeah. And uh, uh, Mincer explained to me, he said, I did phone consultations with Mike and he said, uh, wow. yeah, I actually went out and trained with him at, at, and gold in Venice too. Wow. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. It was an experience. Uh, but Mike explained to me, he's like, um, he said, let's, let's say for instance, you're doing a set of barbell curls with a hundred pounds and no matter how hard you try, you can only get 10 reps. You're, you know, you're shaking all over and you can only get you know, 10 reps is the last rep you can get. He's like, what what rep of that set do you think would be most productive in terms of gaining muscular strength and size? The first rep, which was the easiest, or the last rep where you're shaking all over and you can barely get that rep? Well, the last rep. And he said, yes. Now, what if you never do that last rep? Right. I agree with that 100%. I agree with that 100%. But it's funny because uh, uh, um, I interviewed Drew last week. And he reached out to Keith Klein, who worked with Muscle Media Magazine, and he designed a program for Drew. And it's funny that you reached out to Mike Mincer. Uh, I yep. never knew that. That's really interesting. Yep. And I, I yep. love Mike Mincer type training. I just like to train more frequently. So, I mean, I've really right. never seen it's hard to get anybody. Used that. Yeah. So I've never really seen anybody that only trained two days a week and was able to achieve what you achieved. But it's because you trained to complete muscular failure. And that's what is required to get results from them training less frequently you have to train to failure absolutely so, yeah so i mean those are great answers by the way brad the uh you know i've trained thousands of clients and i found by far the most difficult part of the transformation is the emotional control you know the psychological aspect uh call it discipline how are you able to set and keep such high standards for yourself and how are you able to consistently maintain those high standards still to this day you're in great shape well, uh, thanks, Jeff. Um, I think if that's a that's a hard question to answer. But it's kind of an easy question to answer too. I think it comes down to, um, I think I, I think I think it comes down to setting your goals and then doing X, Y, and Z to achieve that, and then you have the end goal. And then that whole thing is the process. And I think, you know, through the process, you gain a lot of s sense of accomplishment. Um, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And it's that sense of accomplishment that keeps you motivated and keeps you going and keeps your drive high. I know like with the, with the weight training protocol that I, that I was doing um, every time I went into the gym, every single workout that I did was a measurable achievement. I either went up in weight or reps or both every single workout. And that's a huge motivation. That's a, that's a, uh, a lot of sense of accomplishment. And it just, I, I think that what keep that keeps, that's what kept me going. Just those little steps mm -hmm. that you see improving all the time. 
Yeah, I agree. When you see or feel the results, it's always a motivator. And so that's a great thing with uh, weight training. They're, they're actually visible and you can actually see them, you know, uh, yeah. just working yeah. out in general. Yeah, you can see them on paper, you know. Yeah. yeah. So were you actually tracking everything on paper or were you just keep doing it in your head when you were doing your workouts? Oh, no, it was. Okay. We tracked it. Uh, my training partner, Christopher Brandt, he, uh, he was totally into this kind of training. He trained and we were really like neck and neck, you know, and he was the perfect training partner. And we would track every single set on, he would write mine down and I would write his down. I would do, I would, he wow. did the same exact workout. And we tracked it to the quarter of a rep. So say, for instance, we're doing squats. Um, you know, we would say, you know, I would get under the bar, would get the weight loaded, maybe, you know, maybe 20 more pounds on there, whatever. And Chris would tell me, he said, okay, now last time you got 17 and three quarter reps. You got to get 18. So we would yeah, track so, it. To, yeah, we tracked it very precisely. So did he get results similar to yours doing the same workout that you were doing? He he yeah, he got pretty good results. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So so Brad, during your twelve week transformation, was it smooth sailing, or did you encounter any challenges along the way? I, you know, Jeff, it smooth. Yeah. It, I mean, you look back on it, and it was fun, right? Like I had a. It was one of the best times of my life. I had a great time doing it. Uh, smooth sailing. I don't know. I wouldn't call it smooth sailing. I mean, it, it was hard. You know, it was. Uh, yeah, I went to bed hungry every night and I was sore all the time and I was tired. So definitely wasn't smooth sailing, but, um, it was, it was, it was a rough road, but it was, it was satisfying. You know, it was, I felt good about it every day. Yeah. Cause you saw progress, you saw it or you felt and it. That's just like progress. any, yeah. yeah. So in yeah, a way to it me. Was sailing. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it's just like, uh, anything in life, you know, we're, anything you want to improve on, anything you want to get better at, you're going to have to go through discomfort, inconvenience. Absolutely. You know, just it's not going to fit into your lifestyle. You're going to have to force it to fit into your lifestyle. Yeah, but there's, there's rewards. You've got to give up things. You know, you can't. Yeah. You're not going yeah. out to the parties. You're not. Uh, you, you know, you you can't eat that pizza and cheeseburger, and and you, you've got to sacrifice things. Yeah, but the funny thing is, if you look at your life, if you had kept on going to the parties and kept on uh, eating those cheeseburgers uh, for those 12 weeks instead of working out, you look at the difference. So so that sacrifice, that dedication, uh, just never giving up, what a massive change it makes in such a short period of time. The higher the intensity, the, the better the information, the better the results. It creates massive changes in a very short period of time. Whatever it is in your life, it's a Absolutely. sacrifice. Yeah, and it's discomfort. It's the same formula for everything. Anyways, Brad, one, yeah. So once you finished your 12-week transformation and saw your before and after photos like side by side, did you think, I got this? Did you feel like you could have done better? Uh, what were your thoughts when you saw those pictures side by side? Okay, so um, when I seen them, I, re I remember, I remember going to, when we, when I went to take the pictures, um, I, I knew there was, I, I felt very satisfied. I felt like there was absolutely nothing else I could have done. And that was my goal is to leave no, absolutely no stone unturned in, in, in the quest for doing this. And, uh, and when I got the pictures, I had a very good photographer and, uh, uh, yeah, I was, I, I was, I was very pleased. I was happy. I was happy. Yeah. To, I mean, there was, uh, I believe, 6,400 people that entered our contest. So you had to put that type of effort into it to leave no stone unturned. You had to put every bit of effort you could in to, to become a champion. And so obviously that's what you did. So, so, so Brad, next you mailed in your transformation packet and then you waited. How did they let you know you were a winner? Because in the video, they didn't show them approaching you like they did with a lot of us. You know, so how, yeah, how did you find out? Okay, so I think my, I think our case was a little different, Jeff. Um, mm -hmm. You remember Sean Brown, right? Um, of course. He, yeah. he, he was he was calling me, and he said, and you know, I was so excited to hear from him. He's like, "This is Sean Brown from EAS." I was like, "Oh my god!" And he said, "You did really good, but you didn't win." And, but you had a, yeah, we, we like, we like your story and we like your, your photos. 
and we want to come out and do a story about you in the magazine. I thought, well, that's a little odd, but okay, that's cool. You know, I was like, okay, cool. You know, and then he would, he would call, he called me probably 10 times. I don't know. A lot. seemed like he called me a lot. And I was supposed to meet him at a coffee shop in downtown St. Louis. And I was just walking out this before it's cell phones. Right. I was just, I was just walking out the door and the phone rings. So I pick it up and it was Sean. He's like, Hey Brad, we're not going to be able to, uh, I've got a scheduling problem. We're not going to be able to make it. Uh, sorry. I'll get a hold of you later. So I was like, Oh, bummer, you know? And then they, I think they called me the next day and said, well, we just, we were trying to meet you, but we really did have a scheduling problem. And, um, you were one of the winners. We'll see you in Denver. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. You know, uh, I, after I posted that first interview with Drew and Drew mentioned that they called him and told him the same thing that, uh, he was not a winner and they called me and told me I'm not a winner either, you know, but they would like to do a, a future article in the magazine. Uh, but yeah. then Sean Brown actually commented on that video. He said, we told everybody that. <laughs> so I'm because I guess they wanted, it. yeah, but I guess they wanted it to be a surprise. Uh, but it, I think it was really to test the emotional state of the people to see if they were going to get, be explosive or uh, react irrationally. And they're not going to want that type of person to represent EAS and muscle media. So I think it was also a test of the person's emotional uh, state is what in my belief. You might be right. I can, see, I, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. 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 I was so, cool with it. I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I an article in the magazine just to talk to you guys. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. So me, I, I was like, Oh, I'd be more than happy to do an article in the magazine, but I was, I was bummed. Cause I, I definitely thought I should be a winner as well. And I, I said, man, I can't wait to see the actual winners before and after pictures because <laughs> mine are incredible. So those, those must be super incredible. You know, and then they surprised I, was, I was thinking the same thing, Jeff. I was like, how did these, how, who are these people that did more than I did? I, I, don't, I don't get it. Yeah. I think that so, was possible. Yeah. So then, Brad, all 10 category champions were flown out to Golden, Colorado uh, for a three day weekend to be held at the EAS uh, Muscle Media headquarters to ultimately choose one overall winner. What was it like to meet Bill Phillips, his family, the whole crew? And what was it like to meet the other competitors as well? But go ahead and talk about Bill Phillips and his crew out there first and then talk about the other competitors. Well, first of all, like what Bill, what an amazing guy. Right. And, and his entire family, you know, Sean and, it, it, you know, his whole family and his whole crew is just phenomenal people. Um, I remember I, I totally was not expecting this. I got off the plane in Denver and this was pre nine 11. So you, you could just walk right up to the gate and, uh, uh, Bill, I walked as soon as I walked off the plane, there was Bill and like 10 cameras and lights and microphones and like surrounded me. And I was, I was in shock. I didn't know what to say. I, was, I, was, I thought what in the world? And there was, and there stood Bill, you know, it was, it was a surreal moment. That, that uh, was in the video. I, I, that was in the uh, body of yeah. work documentary. Yes. Yeah. 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 They really caught me off guard. I, as soon as I yeah. got out, as soon as I walked out of that gate, boom, there it was lights, camera action. Yeah. 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 Wow. But, uh, so yeah, what was it was like to what, meet, what, yeah. What an amazing time out there. That, that was in a, that was an incredible three days, wasn't it? Like nerve wracking too. And, yeah. uh, and then to have the ending that it had, I just, wow. I was blown away. Just, just blown yeah, away. To, yeah. To me, we, we experienced the full spectrum of emotions. I mean, like you That's said, perfect. There, it, there, it was anxiety causing, but also surreal. Like we were living in a dream just because, uh, I mean, meeting Bill, I'd followed his magazines for years. And I, I really thought I used to like the other magazines until Bill's magazine came along. And then I'm like, Me Bill's too. God, you know? And so then to meet Bill, to meet his mother, to meet his sister, his brother, you, you met his whole family out there and they treated yeah. like you were family. They were all so friendly. And then the whole crew was friendly and, and it was so professional, so organized. I mean, it was just, I, I couldn't have uh, really imagined a higher quality uh, group of people or a uh, company. I mean, just the whole thing was put together flawlessly. Uh, it's, it's one of the most so, yeah. amazing experiences of my life. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. I, so, I was just blown away. I didn't want it to end. I was like, uh, 
wow, I didn't, it, I don't know if that was three days seemed like five minutes or it seemed like three months. It was, yeah. uh, yeah. it was, I was just kind of in awe the whole time. Yeah, just what, a, yeah. what an amazing group of people. Yeah. Like it was surreal. It was like living a dream. And so speaking of that, uh, when, what was it like meeting the competitors when you were out there? Uh, what well, did you that think was, you met that, that was surreal as well, you know, and, yeah. I, and I thought, okay, you know, and I still went out there and I thought, okay, nobody, I, I think I got, I got this. I don't know how anybody could have outworked me. I did everything possible. And then I see you and I see Ralph and I see mm -hmm. Drew and I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I got my, I got my work cut out for me here. I don't know what's going to happen, but you know, and it was amazing to me because we were all pretty much like for those three days, com basically competing against each other. But then we're all like best friends too at the same time. It right. was, it was just an amazing thing. Yeah. You know, one thing I want to add is, uh, the, uh, kind of glow of everybody because everybody was so healthy because they were exercising properly. They were eating properly. Everybody looked like a movie star. Their skin was healthy. Their energy was high. Their yeah. eyes were clear. I mean, just everybody was like yeah. a model that won because they, that, and that's what happens. Even somebody like you who is overweight and unhealthy can look incredible if, if you just follow the proper protocol. So, yeah. so yeah. 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 So speaking of the weekend, what was it like to be in that incredible energy of working out, filming, meeting meeting all the cool people that were part of the weekend and making us feel like we were part of the eas muscle media family what was that like it was it, I, I jeff it was amazing i felt it felt like i was a movie star or something you know yeah. and then and then in there working you know because you read you read that mat you read bill's magazine and and you get this perception of who bill is and everything and then there you are working out with him as a, with, and a camera in your face. It was just, I didn't know what to think, you know, it was, uh, it was amazing energy. Um, it was just, it, everything was positive. You know, e everyone had that, everyone that worked for bill and including all 10 of us, everyone, I would say what I took, what I remember is everyone had this positive energy and it was just, and it was contagious, you know, and it just created more positive energy. It was, uh, yeah, I, it was, it's still surreal when I think about it. Yeah. Well, speaking of po positive energy, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. You know, when I was, uh, interviewed, uh, Drew, he was talking about, uh, visualization and manifestation. And he was saying that he, he would visualize, uh, winning the Lamborghini, being out at the EAS headquarters, meeting Bill Phillips. And I did something very similar. I, I would visualize as well, but I also did the manifestation. And I kind of created what's called a dream board where I had um, the cut out the picture of the Lamborghini and I cut out a picture of my head and I put it in the driver's seat of that Lamborghini and I put it above my desk and I would look at that every day and just envision uh, being the winner. So uh, speaking of manifestation, visualization, did you do any of that? I did exactly that, Jeff. I had a bulletin <laughs> board in my kitchen and eating dinner and and breakfast i would sit there at at my table and i would stare at that i had the lamborghini i had um i had i, I can't i had a picture of uh somebody in the magazine i i don't i don't know who it was i can't remember uh maybe roger applewhite remember him i think it was him i was like i want to look he like flawless i want to look mm -hmm. like that you know and uh uh yeah yeah i totally did the it's, visualization yeah you know and, and i would say Speaking of Roger Applewhite, I always looked at him. I was so jealous because he was perfect. But you, to me, had the the uh, most complete physique out of all the competitors. You you were balanced. Like uh, for me personally, and, and Drew mentioned it in his interview, we could have uh, uh, improved on our legs a little bit more. Uh, we worked them hard, but uh, they still could have improved a little bit more. But you are completely balanced, like uh, Frank Zane, Roger Applewhite type physique i mean to me i saw your physique and i'm like now that is balanced uh, very Thanks, impressive sir. yeah Thanks. yeah very impressive and and and, and I, I i worked hard on that that routine that where uh that mike mincer routine where you know i didn't do any overlapping i hit i tried to hit each individual muscle the same so 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 speaking of that i have a question regarding that um 
did when Mike Mincer found out you won, what what did you did you have a conversation with him after you won? You know what? I don't think I, I don't think I ever talked to him after that. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Huh. And he, so, he's a busy guy. Mike was a very busy individual, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. He, he was one of the intellectuals in bodybuilding. The mm -hmm. um so so Brad, if you were to do the twelve week transformation challenge again today, is there anything that you did twenty five years ago that you would change if you were to do that same challenge uh, to get even better results today? You know, I might I would probably back off on the intensity a little bit and increase the volume, maybe a little bit. Actually, probably wouldn't do a whole lot different. I'd probably do it just pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but cut I back might, on. I might, work out a, I might replace a little intensity with a little volume, just because I'm, you know, I'm I'm 55, not 25, and um, yeah, right. Probably do right, but wouldn't do a whole lot different. The basic structure. So, Brad, what have you been doing with your life for the past 25 years, and what are you currently up to? Well, um, uh, I'm still doing the same type of work that I was doing before. I'm uh, uh, doing exploration core drilling, uh, drilling for bridge replacement now with MoDOT. And I'm still active. I'm still working working out in the gym um, once, twice a week. And uh, I'm racing ultra endurance mountain bike races. Yeah. So for everybody that's watching, he's not just racing. He's like a champion. He did a race yesterday and he, he won in his category. He's one of the top guys out there. So uh, if anybody's interested in mountain biking, you know, definitely follow Brad. But the uh, so pe people, he's still at the top of his uh, sport, whatever it is, whether it's fitness or whether it's mountain biking, he's still at the top of his sport. So Brad, it's been great catching up. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we end this podcast? Uh. I'd just like to say, Jeff, it was a pleasure to see you again. It was, a, it was a pleasure to talk to you and relive all these great moments that we had together. And uh, uh, thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, thank you again, Brad. I appreciate your time. And I thank all of you for tuning in. And be sure to tune in for my next podcast where I'll be interviewing another incredible champion of the Bodywork Challenge. Thank you again, everybody, and take care.